Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, instead of showing you weapons, I thought it would be fun for me to try to make a weapon. A few months ago, I released a video on YouTube that was all about the different hidden weapons we carry at KarateMart.com, and you guys seemed to really like it. So, I thought that I would make a hidden marker spike. But before we begin, if you could just subscribe to our channel so that you receive future videos, that would be awesome. Um, now, I just want to mention that this video is for entertainment purposes only, and you could honestly get really hurt by trying to use some of these power tools and make this thing. Plus, it could actually be illegal in your area to carry something like this, so do not try this at home. Okay, so I guess the first thing I'm going to need in order to make this hidden marker spike is a permanent marker. I've got one sitting over here. But I should probably explain where I'm at. This is actually the room where we do a lot of prototyping. We come up with new weapons ideas and we just grab metal off the wall and we just shape and form new weapons that way. So it's a lot of fun back here. But uh, I'm just gonna start by taking off the cap and you can see that it's got a felt tip on the end of it. So I need to get rid of that tip. So I'm going to take a pliers and just remove the tip of that marker. And as you can see, it's got a little insert in there, but I do not want to touch this insert because I will get permanent marker all over my hands. I'm just going to drop that in the trash. The next thing I need to do is take apart this marker body. So I don't want to crack it, so I have to be careful, but I'm just going to kind of slowly bend it in the center and just kind of twist it a little bit and eventually I'm able to get it to come apart. And it's got a big marker insert in there that I do not want to touch at all, so I'm gonna drop that in the trash as well. So now I've got the parts of a marker that are perfect for me to make this hidden marker spike. But in order to make it, I'm gonna need a set of throwing spikes. So let's go grab a set of throwing spikes from the other room and uh, finish this marker off. So uh, when I was younger, I lived in this really small town in Wisconsin. It was probably about 10,000 people. It's called Baraboo, Wisconsin. And there really was not a lot to do out there because it was kind of a farm town. Um, so what I'd do is I would practice the martial arts a lot and then I'd spend a lot of my time making weapons. I would make uh, bow stabs out of dowels and throwing stars out of sheet metal, you know, stuff like that. And um, you know, as I, as I got older, I kind of turned that into more of a business instead of a hobby. And actually about, I think it was probably about eight years ago, I came up with this thing that has been hugely popular, the collapsible bow staff. You guys have probably seen it on KarateMart.com. It's a super fun weapon and just, uh, just really popular. But uh, I'm not here to show off my weapons. I want to try to make this hidden marker spike today. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a uh, throwing spike. And uh, these guys I think will work okay. These are um, the ones with tassels. Let's open that up. And it's a set of three. Um, you know, I don't think I ever showed you guys how to throw these things. I know I did a video a couple of weeks ago on how to throw throwing stars, um, but we never really talked about throwing spikes. And I think I still have the area set up over there to throw these guys. So let's, let's, go, uh, let's go give them a whirl. So if you haven't watched the throwing star video I released a few weeks ago on YouTube, definitely take some time to watch that because I actually found some really interesting throwing stars to test out. Like I tested out the bat shaped ones and I tested out the throwing cards. It's just a really cool video. Um, looks like I don't have the wooden Wing Chun dummy here anymore to throw these at, but I, I do have a foam puzzle mat and that'll work just fine for us. Uh, but uh, with these throwing spikes, they're definitely thrown a little bit differently than throwing stars. Uh, typically what you wanna do is you wanna kinda put them in between these two fingers and have the center about in the center of your palm. Um, but what I like to do, because these are the tasseled version is I like to actually bring it up a little bit higher uh, just to kind of balance it on those two fingers because this is a little heavier so it just balances nicely if I bring it up a little bit. Um, and there's a couple of ways to throw it. Uh, a lot of people like to just kind of throw it and 
pop their hand down. So when you do it, the throwing spike doesn't turn at all. It just goes straight into the target. That's a good way to do it. That's actually how I learned. Um, but I found uh, that the way I really like to do it nowadays is I like to throw it and it's a straight overhead throw. And when I let go, I kind of brush it with my hand. So what it does is it flips once and then sticks. And it just, uh, for me, it seems to work a little better, but um, you know, everyone has their own way of doing things. So let's just give it a whirl. Um, you just go back here. And... Okay, that was okay, but I think I can do a little bit better. Let's try it one more time. It's been a while since I've thrown these, so. Okay, it's not bad. Um, they're actually fairly easy to throw, but you get better and better the more you throw them. Um, but I'm not here to throw spikes. I'm gonna finish making that hidden marker spike. Okay, so now that I have my throwing spike, I guess what I need to do is get this spike into this permanent marker casing. So as you can see, the spike is currently too long and I've got this tassel at the end of it. So I guess uh, the first thing I need to do is get this tassel off of here. So I think if I twist it a little bit, yeah, I can kind of get that off of there. Good. It took a little bit of pulling, but it came off and it was, uh, it was kind of attached to this knurling on the spike. So let's see. So let's look at exactly what we have here. So right now, if we put the spike in here, I can tell that the tip doesn't come out as far as I'm gonna want it for this hidden marker spike. So I'm gonna start by drilling the end of this permanent marker uh, so it makes it just a little bit larger so the spike can stick out. So I'm gonna need a drill bit that's just slightly smaller than this throwing spike. So I've got a whole drawer of drill bits over here. Let's just see if I can find one. Okay. All right, that one's just a little bit too big. If I were to use this one, it would make the hole too big and then the spike would just come right through. So I can't use that. Um, all right, that one I think will work. This is just slightly smaller than the spike itself. It's a uh, 3 16 drill bit. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on a drill. And one thing I've kind of noticed is uh, when you're drilling, if you go too fast, the drill bit heats up and then it just cracks this plastic on the cap. So I need to go super slow to make sure that that cap doesn't crack. So I'm just gonna throw that in a pliers and just go super slow. And if I have to back it out a little bit, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of, because if, there we go, perfect, perfect. And if we look at it, I'm not seeing any cracks on that cap. So I did it just right. That's great. All right. So now let's just take a look at this right here. So this is what we have for the length of our marker. And here's a spike. And the marker now fits the spike rather nicely. So it just sticks out just perfectly, but it's too long. So it looks like what I need to do is I need to cut it just above where the knurling is there. So let's see, I could use a hacksaw. I have a bandsaw over there, but that feels like a bit of overkill. Um, I actually have a bolt cutter over here that should work pretty nicely. I'm just gonna grab that. And let's see. So I'll just kind of throw that in just above the knurling and perfect. Yeah, not bad. All right, so now I'm gonna put that up there and I'm gonna put the cap on this and there's still a lot of space there. But if I look into this marker, and you can't see this, you're not gonna be able to see this on video, there's actually like a honeycomb kind of webbing at the bottom of this uh, marker. And uh, 
I think that I can just hammer the spike down into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my rubber mallet and I've got some holes on this table here. I think there's, yeah, here's a kind of small one here. So I'm just going to stick that in the hole, just kind of, did you hear that? It, uh, it went on just perfectly. And now that spike's in there tight. That's not coming out at all. Um, it actually went down quite a bit. So let's uh, see if the cap fits on there nicely now. Okay, it's pretty close. You can see there, there's still a gap between the cap and then the base of that. So we just need to uh, hammer it down just a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I, I saw this other hole here, so I'm just gonna stick the marker in that. Give it a little tap. Perfect. Okay, look at that. Got the tip of the spike coming out of there perfectly. It's not cracked. Looks great. Let's throw the cap on it and see how it looks. Oh, that is awesome. That is really awesome. So if we look at this, this is completely indistinguishable from a standard permanent marker, which is exactly what I want in a hidden weapon. So I like this. I think it's awesome. Um, anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this video, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to our channel. I really hope to see you next week for Weapons Wednesday.